digital theology. Uh, what do you mean by that, and uh, how can we uh, use that in a Filipino American church mm-hmm. context? Yeah. So, digital theology is uh, a research interest for me, even when I'm still doing my MDiv thesis. It actually started there during my MDiv thesis. But the idea is uh, the intersection of theology and technology on how it somehow shapes our uh, our faith and or, or maybe our perception of who God is when it comes to authority on the communication and personal relationship with God. Mm. So like like when, when COVID happened, so digital theology is not just a reaction of of out of COVID, but it is uh, it has been there since like 10, 20 years ago. So when we say digital theology, uh, especially during the COVID times, everyone shifted to online worship. Everyone shifted to doing uh, like this, uh, uh, small group Bible study sessions on Zoom, uh, before Skype, uh, before it was uh, others, other platforms. So there's this, there's this idea of authenticity. Is it authentic? Uh, are there, uh, the Bible says uh, you should gather, you should not, uh, you should not miss it out. You need to be regularly gathering. Uh, is online gathering an authentic gathering? And right. for more than a year and two, uh, many churches have been meeting online, on Zoom, Facebook Live, YouTube broadcasted. So are, are those, uh, are those meetings, uh, liturgies, and worship? Are they are they authentic? Are they valid? Even doing communion online, those who are uh, like away from you, is his presence very important? When some is it is it face to face really the medium when it comes to worship? Is is uh, worship uh, can it be done in cyber spaces? Can the Holy Spirit work? in and through digital platforms so those kind of things uh that's how that's what we ask and when applied in missions how can we be effective in uh, proclaiming jesus on our social media or creating softwares and website uh, uh, in 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 a way where we can do missions so that's digital theology and applied that one in a church context in Filipino American. Uh, remember how I told you a while ago that when it comes to reaching out to the younger generation, they're very digital. Right. Their language is digital. So uh, adults would not uh, understand why they always have earphones and uh, 24-7 connected on Discord, or maybe not 24-7, but most of the time they're on Discord talking with their friends. Because that is already the sense for them of being in community, right. interaction. That even if they are not present physically, they are together even virtually. And for them, that is authentic. But for us, as, as digital immigrants, it's hard for us to fathom those kind of uh, scenarios and even even others would say uh, do you is, is your experience there really uh, effective do you, are you really uh, growing in that uh, through that maturity and I believe yes mm-hmm. it, it is it was, it was my way for for me to connect to them the digital platforms and yeah, the, the gaming too right gaming and we even do virtual uh, reality sessions we went and we had a field trip uh, doing uh, in out on in, on outspace vr i don't know if you're right into- oh, that's awesome <laughs> so those kind of things uh and i believe that that will be the future right uh the w3 uh, the the website the ww3 the digital uh internet is, is going there more digital virtual nfts right. uh metaverse so those are the things that we are that i am focusing on and not trying to be 
reactionary, but more of being ahead. Being ahead. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. Um, actually, I'm very digital as well. I, I work online. That's what I do. I make content. But one of the things that I've, we've done here at our church uh, during COVID was uh, we also, you know, we set up an online presence. And have you guys heard of Four Fields? Four Fields? No. no. So it's basically like a, a strategy for uh, planting churches. That is very very simple it's very connected to like discussion based bible studies uh, anyways so that's something that we set up uh, we connected this uh, missiology kind of um, strategy mission strategy with technology where you can have bible studies even without a pastor right using discussion based models anyways long story short uh we began to grow like outside of Houston and we started having lots of communities outside, especially Thailand and the Philippines. And this year, at the end of this year, we're gonna plant a Thai church uh, out of that, right? Because uh, eventually the groups that started, they started like an Englishman. Mm-hmm. And then now like they're gonna start a, they're gonna start a church in Thailand out of this digital ministry. So. Uh, and I, what I find interesting is these are actually first generation, but in, in parts of Asia. And I think it's because during COVID, you know, they're all scattered and there's no community. They can't, they can't find, they can't go to church physically. And, you know, they live in a place where uh, it's mostly non-Filipinos. So they're in the outskirts. They're a scattered, basically Filipino workers. And so... Like you said, Pastor JP, it's like that's the way for them to find community, and that's like, the, the questions that you've actually asked are the same questions that we asked. Like some members, some people, especially ones who have been in church a lot longer, right? In, in the West, is they they question whether uh, is this a valid form of church? Don't we have to be together? You know, so very very interesting. Uh, topic pastor jp i'd love to hear more about this uh, you know if you have materials on it i think mm-hmm. i think uh, it's it's a uh, it, it definitely something that's uh very important moving forward yeah yeah 